This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by Stewart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stewardguitars.com. Also brought to you by Idea Bench, makers of hot rod inspired pedal boards and pedal board accessories at ideabench.com. Microphones for Inside the Gilliverse are brought to you by Rode Microphones. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for episode 14 of Inside the Gilliverse. My name is Eric Broadbent, where we talk all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. It comes with great pleasure this evening to welcome, you know him as Sound Guy from Jimmy McGill, uh, the video production crew, uh, Saul Goodman Productions, actor, musician, Julian Bonfilio. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Doing very, very well. And I'm really happy I pronounced it right because I practice these things in the dry rehearsal off, off air and I got it right. And a lot of times I go live and then I mess it up. So we got it right. So it's very good to have you here. It. <laughs> oh, it's an honor. It's an honor, my man. I appreciate it. It's great. Yeah, you got it perfect. I'm glad to have you here. We got a lot, a lot of cool uh, people over in the chat. We're going to say hi to them this evening as well, too. And uh, we got a lot of great questions. And it does look like we have a little bit of a slow internet connection, so please bear with us. I'm not seeing any drop frames or anything of that nature, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, but we're going to jump into some great questions right away here, and one of them is from one of our YouTube channel members. And if you are new to this feature here on our channel, you, there's a button down below the video. It says join. You can join at a very low price and all kinds of cool perks. We're going to be doing our very first Zoom party on Sunday, hanging out, just getting to know everybody, which is really, really cool. Gilliver's fam is uh, really, really awesome. Uh, but this comes from Karina, and I want to read it down. And you and I were talking a little bit about Bob off the air, so it's a little bit of a Bob yeah. uh, question. She says, okay. um, Bob Odenkirk has said that he loves his scenes uh, with the college film crew and tapping into his sketch comedy roots. What scene did you do with Bob that was the most fun to film? Oh, man. Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, off the bat, there's this one scene that we did together where we're about to go to the music shop and he's picking us up at UNM. And so he's like, screeches pulling up and we're like, oh, crap, got to get in. And so in that whole moment, uh, Josh, uh, Haley and I are trying to gather up all the stuff in a very kind of improv kind of way. We didn't really rehearse it that that much, which is perfect because that's what Bob, Bob likes to do. So we were... Uh, messing around with it and it just was that perfect take where in that one moment you see me trip josh with my sound wire from my my boom and he sticks his leg out like a like a cow trying to get his okay leg back in. and that was like probably one of the best you know improv spontaneous magical moments in film that were probably will go down in history for me as one of the best scenes ever isn't that cool sure. that's Thank awesome you. and you know what i yeah, was a great scene. i've been trying to do this for the last few guests i've been trying to um i was trying to uh bring out some props right for some of the guests we had we had max uh Arsenega on the show and I, I was gonna bring my bike lock out and she you know because i had the exact same uh bike lock and i forgot about that and i forget one of the last guests i had uh, and I was going to bring out one of the props, but tonight I did this purposely just for you. So I brought this out. See if we can show it on camera here. Oh boy! There we go. Just for hey. you. <laughs> I got oh, the road. Just me. There you go. I got the road boom pole pro. I got a shotgun NTG three in there. You know, just for you. Oh, it's so there you perfect. go. It's 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 like identical. There you go. Right. It's so identical. I, I finally did it. I finally brought out a prop that was relevant. And that's going to be one of the questions I'm going to ask you in a moment as well, too. Some on-set tutorials that you may have uh, received from some of the cast and crew. But before I even talk about uh, myself with a question, I'm going to uh, mention a comment, or this is a comment and or a question from one of our other channel members and good friends here, Lori. Uh, she loves uh, she loves you. She loves the show. She says, hey, they're excited for tonight's show. By the way, I have a friend that is staying up to watch your show tonight. He's in Bordeaux, France. 
He wants to ask a question oh. to Julie, or he wants to ask Julian a question. His name is, um, no, I'm going to pronounce this probably wrong. I'm going to do my very, very best. And I, please, uh, I'm not trying to say it in, incorrectly, but uh, Raghava Krishna. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, uh, yeah. Raghava. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Raghava, man. Okay. Oh, man. That guy is brilliant. You know. Oh, my okay. God. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no problem. No problem. He says. Um, he is the guy that does awesome sketches. Okay, of Bit Across All People, as well as... Okay, then I know him, too. Now that I know it's a sketch, I've seen some of his stuff, and I think oh, I'm following yeah. him on Twitter as well, too. Oh, he's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, my God. Did did yeah. one of um, of uh, Kim Wexler... Did, and I saw one on an opposite show. Did Pam from The Office, right? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, phenomenal. Totally, Pam. And, so, and everybody from The Office and everybody on the show, he's... You know what? Can I time it for five seconds? I'm going to go grab it. Okay, good, good. Awesome. This is a really good question and comment there, Lori, and thank you for asking that as well, too. So I'll continue with that as soon as Julian comes back. I was wondering, why did I know that name? And, you know, sometimes, you know, I have to think about it for a second, but yeah, I'm following him on Twitter. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. He is, he is one of the most unbelievable sketch artists I've ever seen. Up until this point, I've seen a lot of sketch artists, and he, he is on top of he is he's going somewhere and he sent me this care package with all these sketch peter sketches of peter gold and uh he sent me josh oh my goodness look at that yep yeah oh just watch this okay so he sent me and these were from the beginning when he was just starting out and he sent us of all four of us got bob <laughs> I mean, look at that and then myself. Oh, good one! So beautiful, so happy with that. And then he got Haley. Yeah, which is great. And then I was just like, "Dude, you are fantastic." So then, on top of everything, he sent me this portrait of me. Wow, that's three dimensions. I can see the that dimension is, to that. Oh my, dude! I mean, look at the detail, man. Yeah. Oh man, he is just, I mean, the hair and every, oh, he's, speaks for itself. Yeah, speaks absolutely for itself. amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I should have had that ready. The, 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 the <laughs> one, especially we, the last one you showed of you was, I could really, like, it was like a 3D photo almost. Yeah, yeah really, no, really I mean, good. I, I, I can't believe where he's coming from. He's just so fantastic. I have such an appreciation for that. I mean, obviously, you and I are musicians. We play guitar. We'll talk about some of that later tonight, too. And that's a talent in itself, too. Oh, yeah. But to, just to bring something to life on canvas like that, whether you're a painter or an artist, you know, it's just phenomenal. Just flabbergast me. But anyways, I think, let me see what he continues on to say. So he does the awesome sketches of the Better Call Saul people. A Better Call Saul. I totally people. sidetracked. Yeah, no problem. Uh, he did the really cool sketch of Julian and he and the rest of the crew. So we've seen those. Uh, I told him about all the Inside the Gillivers. Check out his work if you have the time. So yeah, she's basically telling, it, telling us about him. And I think actually a question came in from him. Uh, let me see here. Um, so there's actually a continued question from Laurie. Which uh, do you think is more difficult, acting or modeling? Oh, that's a good... Hey, he knows a little bit about my past. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did some modeling back when I was 18, of from age of 17 to, to 19, 20, and did some modeling back. Um, in fact, I actually was... When I was 18, I was shipped off to Milan to do Fashion Week at Milan, which was crazy time in my life. But... Um, it, you know, it's acting, you need to have a lot of human experience, which I think thanks to modeling and thanks to everything else in my life from where I've come from and where I'm going, you know, it's it's always using those experiences to create an authentic performance that people can live truthfully under imaginary circumstances and in that can find a human connection. And that's what I love about acting with modeling. You, you're using your body more so for the art sake of, you know, just human physique. And it's in itself is a very, very difficult part of that. Um, but I think overall, emotionally, if you're, if you're talking from an emotional point of view, acting is always just so, you know, you have to, you have to fuel all sorts of creative energy from whatever you're doing, right? From what, whether it's music or drawing or anything. Um, modeling has that. And if you're really, really good at it, you can really strike that emotional response within just a glance, which is insane to, to me. I, luckily, I've uh, you know, been seeing, I've seen a lot of people do it and it's fantastic. And 
I just guess I never got to that <laughs> point. But um, but you know, to to the extent of where it comes for me with acting, since it's such a spiritual and such a uh, it's such a meaningful art form to me that I feel where I come from with acting is a lot more, uh, more work okay. because of what I'm trying to pull out. So yeah, I would say acting for sure, cool. but it's it's all art. That's you right. Know, it is. Get into the flow of it. That's right. It's all. Yeah, it, it, it totally is. So that was from Lori. That was the question from Lori. But I think there is a question coming from him in, in a moment. Uh, well, thank Bla- you, Lori. Yeah. Blazy Gardner's here. Nice to see her back. And she says, it's great to see you, Julian. What is your favorite story from on set? From on set? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, geez, that's, that's every every night. Is, every time that we shot, whether it's at night or during the day, it's fantastic. I mean, you're dealing with the dream crew. You know, mm-hmm. you're dealing with some of the most talented people whether it's crew you're talking about grips you're talking about sound you're talking about lights you're talking about everybody every department including the actors that are in front and directors and the writers you know you're dealing with the dream team so anytime you're on that set you hardly have to work because it's all it's all so beautifully done that it's more play than anything so anytime that i'm on set it's been a great experience but i i will have to say that you know, I've had, oh man, it's so, it's, oh, it's hard. That's hard. That's a really hard question. <laughs> it's like naming a favorite I, child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you get, every experience is a different experience, but they're also fun. Anytime that Bob's on set, that's fantastic. Um, anytime that I get to do a scene with Josh and Haley is fantastic. And anybody that we interact with, them are fantastic. Of course. So all of them. Yeah. Jeez, I, uh, I, the one where we go to the music shop is obviously a fun one because I'm, you know, I love music. So I got to play with music the whole time that we were there, and I got to see some incredible FX specialist work on some of Bob's scenes. Which yeah, the drumstick flying, right? Like I was, I was talking to Tom yeah. Schnauz about that because I'm watching it back, and I'm a I'm a VF, VFX fan, and I love, and I can usually spot things like that. But where Bob slips on the drumstick, it goes flying, and it knocks over a, a hi hat stand or a cymbal stand. And uh, Tom yeah. had actually commented and said that was all done in post. And because if you watch yeah. really, really close, it hits the front of the stage. But I mean, so cool to see that stuff, right? Well, it's it's the sleight of hand of, mm-hmm. of you know the magic of film. You know, you you pay attention to the him slipping on the the drumstick, and you pay attention to the slip. You don't see that cut from it. It's so perfect, so seamless that you don't even notice. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely not Bob. But it, you know, it, it plays off perfectly, and that's the brilliance again. You're dealing with the best in film. So. Yeah, well, that, it's really cool too yeah. that you mentioned that you, when you mentioned that anytime you see a scene with Bob, that's one of your favorites, and that that's the cool part about your role, your character, is you wouldn't really be there without Bob because you're you're his you know in his video crew. So anytime there's going to be a scene with Bob, you know, filming a commercial of some sort or a spoof of something, you know, you're there. So you know you're you're blessed yeah. that way. And, you, and if I have my math correct, didn't you do like twelve episodes? So far, yeah, I think it's so far twelve or fourteen or something like that. It's- it's up there. It's getting to that point now where, you know, we're part of the crew. Like it's, That's awesome. it's cool to go on set. Yeah. It's cool to go on set when you're, you're seeing everybody that you know and yeah. Yeah. With the same people. And it's like, Hey, how's it going? Oh, we're back on style again. You know, and that's what I love about the camaraderie the too. Cause everyone, lo- like you say, everyone's so into it and it's such a beautiful place and environment to work. But, you know, there's people uh, many, many times, you know, you see some of the um, the cast and crew where they're not even in a scene. They're not even shooting that day. They're not even on the call sheet. And they're there. They're to support. They'll just show up. Yeah, they show up just to support, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I mean, everybody, you know, you're dealing, you know, Patrick's awesome. Patrick is just fantastic. I love how he just shows up. And, you know, we've done a couple meet and greets with the, the fans during, you know, whether they have parties for it or they have their yearly, you know, Better Call Saul Breaking Bad, you know, mm-hmm. annual gift giveaway, and it's it's so amazing to see how everybody is so down to earth, and that's the one thing that everybody worries about film, and especially if you're considering a career in film, is that you know, especially nowadays, you're it's so vast, and there's so many people that you could be working with, and every experience is so different. But to be with again the dream team, you're dealing mm-hmm. with the best of the best, and not only just because of you know their craftsmanship, but also because of who they are. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, 
I'm going to be very, very lean with my questions. I have about five, six, eight questions for you, but I'm going to probably trim them down to one or two because I want to give them all to the fans in the live chat tonight. But since I were talking about some of the dream team that you've worked with, is there anybody on the cast and crew, um, more so probably cast, that you would love to have met? Because you're obviously not going to meet everyone, I'm sure, unless you do some of these parties and things like that. But is there anyone that you would have always wanted to meet that's part of the cast that you haven't? Or have you pretty much met everybody? Met everybody. You know, you, you, at the rap parties, you know, we we all kind of get together and cool. That's mm-hmm. awesome. But, I mean, I've always wanted to do a scene with Michael Mando. Oh, right you know, on, he, yes. He's just, yeah. Because I speak Spanish, too, because I grew mm. up in Panama. And I've always wanted to do a scene with Bob, and and uh, I've even thrown it to Tom a couple of times. We're like, hey, you know, I speak Spanish. Oh. I, I, I told Peter Gold a couple of times ago, like, hey, man, just give me, <laughs> just throw me in. It'll be so weird to hear me go like, oh, yeah, vamos a correr por allá, tenemos que la cosa. You know, just, it would be so <laughs> random to see the whitest guy all of a sudden starting to deal with the cartel in a very awkward way. Yeah. As part of, like, a scapegoat with Bob. <laughs> Wouldn't I don't be, know. I've, I, it's been funny. Yeah. Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be something if the Saul Goodman Enterprises or Saul Goodman Productions come and did a commercial for the restaurant, and then you, I mean, you yeah. know, and uh, aren't you related to Tuco and you know, all that kind of stuff? That'd be yeah, exactly. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. You know, like that, having the, a standoff with Tuco. That would. Be so oh man, yeah. <laughs> Here's another good question Great. from uh, from uh, Harini. It says uh, hi, Julian Harini from the Netherlands. Uh, let's take it back to your first audition for Better Call Saul. Can you tell us about your audition experience and what lines uh, did you do? And just before you answer that, I, th- I saw another text message come in from Karina. Well, from Sandra, from Karina. I think she's asking about the audition, and I'll clarify that later. But yeah, take it back to the audition yeah. process and tell us a little bit about that. Well, hi to everybody. I mean, I'm, we're talking about Karina, and and I'm sure Donna Kay is on here, and <laughs> everybody. I, I mean, oh, man, I've, I've been getting texts from everybody telling me, um, and so Harini is actually related to Rakava, and it's awesome. That nice. We're all all family. Gilliver's family. Um, yeah. Gilliver's family, baby. Uh, so, yeah, my my first audition with, oh, man. So that, that was actually a crazy time, and I'll make a, a long story short. It was one of my first auditions. So it was, just, you know, Better Call Saul was my first gig that I ever got and, and, and filmed. So... You know, when I was first starting out and getting into the into the world and, you know, I just moved from Panama trying to figure it out and got my agent. And within six months, I booked Better Call Saul. And and so I'm coming down from Santa Fe and I, I don't have a car at this time, so I'm on my bike and I'm in downtown Albuquerque and I'm getting breakfast. And I'm thinking, oh, I got all the time in the world. You know, my audition's at you know, 1120. I, I'm, I should be good. It's nine o'clock and eh, whatever. And about an hour before I had my audition, I checked to see where the audition was going to be. And it was 15 miles away up on Albuquerque studio. So I'm downtown Santa Fe on central and I'm trying to figure out a bus situation to get me down. I mean, I'm, I'm freaking out at this. (laughs) I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to miss this huge audition for better call Saul. And I, New Breaking Bad because I love Breaking Bad, so I was it was a big big audition for me. And um, so I get on the bus and the bus starts going the opposite direction, and I'm freaking out at this point. So I'm like, stop, stop the bus, stop the bus. And I get off on my bike and I just I said, screw it, I'm just gonna ride my bike all the way to Albuquerque City. So what I got an hour I can do it. And it was probably the most euphoric, cathartic experience I've ever had on a bike where I was funneling down like i-25 on on my bike like i didn't know where i was because i've never been to albuquerque so i'm on i-25 on my bike you know freaking out with the cars flying by and and i didn't know that rio or real uh real bravo or wherever it is that you turn off to get onto albuquerque studios right out way past sunport and there i am climbing up this mountain and i have my headphones in i'm listening to some crazy crazy music and i'm getting up getting up working my butt off and i'm finally at this peak and as i lift my head up i see this plane flying right above me i mean it's like right by the airport so the plane is landing and it was like a free willy moment i'm like whoa oh. Oh, whoa and so i start flying down this hill because it's a big hill up and then a big hill down and i'm going solid 
40 miles an hour. I'm probably, I'm probably exaggerating. And I finally get to the base of it. And I finished this song that I was listening to was this band called Blockhead. And I was just totally into the song and it played into the experience. And I finally get off my bike in this huge arroyo where all these bikes go down on, on mountain bike trails. And, and I'm sitting there and immediately the song that comes on is the Beatles. Um, Oh, now I can't think of the name. Oh no. Yeah. Um, come together, uh, come together. What? Come together. Come yeah. together. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> um, mental block there. Uh, of course I forget a Beatles song right on the an interview. Um, and so that comes on. So it's all playing to the music. That's and, good. To the moment. I'm so into it. So then finally I get to the audition with 10 minutes to spare, sweating, drenched, just like, I do not look prepared whatsoever. And probably physically and sore from biking too, right? Like totally yeah. out of it. And I'm just sitting there in the audition. I'm sitting there with all the actors that are looking at me kind of like, what, what's going on with this guy? And I'm just like, <laughs> I, uh, you know, and they call me in like immediately I get in, I sign the sheet, they call me in and I have to do the scene. And I was auditioning for a camera guy actually. Okay. And Joss's character. And I did the scene and it was the, the very first scene where the billboard scene where they're, you know, basically he's like, come on, dude, dude, come on, dude. You know, and, uh, heard back. I didn't, I didn't hear back and for like two weeks and, mm. I thought I'd miss it. I thought I'd screwed it. I was with uh, uh, one of my friends who was auditioning, and she, she was trying to calm me down. Like, it's just, you know, sometimes it's just not yeah. out, but that's what we're I'm just fresh green, didn't know anything about the auditioning process. And and next thing you know, two weeks later, they, my my um, my mentor, who was the guy that got me into to acting anyway, he moved out with me to uh, to New Mexico to start filming or at least I followed him out here and he calls me up just this piss going like, did you check your email? I'm like, what? And he's like, did you check your email? And I'm like, no, I I'm in work right now, man. And I checked my email and they said they wanted me in for a fitting. Oh no. <laughs> so I had to be down there in like 30 minutes. And so he came to pick me up out of work <sighs> and right then and there it was between, it was a fork of the road. I either stayed at work with my shitty boss or I go and do this thing and get on Better Call Saul. And she was just like, if you leave, I'm firing you. And I was like, you're going to have to fire me. <laughs> See ya. That's right. Bye. That's right. So, and the rest is history. Isn't yeah. that something? Yeah. And that's the thing too. I mean, that's a big leap because you might've got there, you got the gig, but I mean, you might've got there. It might've been for one, one episode. Now that still would have been cool. It would have been really good on a resume with a show that of a hit of that nature. But you got a secure job that you know you're going to have a paycheck next week and taking a yeah. chance. But I, I know it's one of those things where opportunity knocks. And, uh, you know, imagine if it would have went to your junk mail. Imagine if it went to your junk mail. There was no email, right? It, it, like, what if I hadn't gotten that call from my guy, Jim Hatch? I'll throw his name in. Jim Hatch hadn't called me and hadn't come pick me up and hadn't done that for me. Yep. What if I had completely blew the whole audition off because I knew I was going to get there to then have near six seasons of Better Call Saul under my belt, which is, I mean... Insane. Needless. Yeah, it's I insane. know. And to be a part of such a great community, it's, you know... That, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So moral of that story, opportunity knocks, make sure you listen. Make sure we all listen. Well, when op opportunity will knock for yeah. all of us, we have to know to, how to recognize those signs. And, uh, and so that's great. So that worked out. That's a beautiful ending and a continuation to that the story. universe has music to those who listen. That's uh, right. Like, I agree on that 100%. Yeah. Here is a question from Mrs. Ignacio Varga. How sweet was it to be able to ride in that Suzuki Esteem? Of all cars, you know, you could ride around with uh, with uh, Michael Mando in that car. I mean, there's some cool cars on the show. But, I mean, in the Suzuki oh, Esteem. Oh, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, that yeah, no, was dusty and old and perfect. It was. It's the best car in the world, and it's so sad that it's gone. And I asked I asked Tom a question about that, and it is it is sad when the when the cars because the cars are a character, you know Walter White's, yeah. you know Aztec, you know Mike's car. I mean, there's so there's just so many cars that are significant, and this is obviously something you would know. I didn't know. I assumed, you know, but there's usually duplicates in case they wreck one in a stunt, whatever. So you know they have a couple of steams and they have that. 
But one thing I noticed today was really cool, just watching some Better Call Saul, you know, tabloid things and stuff like that. You know, they always have the the colors. Uh, colors in, in the Gilliverse are very, very important. That's something, a nod to Vince Gilligan, where, you know, the dark colors and vibrant, like the reds are usually the bad guys. And the more softer colors are more of the innocence. So yellow was, oh. with uh, Jimmy's car is an innocent guy. But I never really put it close, uh, two and two together until like recently with the red, one red door. So it's almost like, yeah. Here's a hint of a bad guy, you know, you know, one day that door is going to speak to you. He's the bad guy, whereas yeah. the car is yellow. Very, very cool. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Vince Gilligan and, uh, sorry, just to No, no, add good, to that, go ahead. Vince Gilligan, Peter Gold, Tom Schnauz are the most brilliant writers in the industry. So, so, so at least some of the most brilliant, yeah. but I would, I would categorize them as the best writers in film. And the way they set those things up it's sometimes it's it's not even intentional it's just so engraved into who they are to write these things into these these breaking bad you know uh el camino and better call saul you're dealing with these such these such subtle little details I, I know I, right it's if I, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Tom isn't watching right now. And if Tom's mom is still watching, hello, Tom's mom. Uh, t- Tom, is uh, he left on episode 12, something like that. Tom, because he, he's writing right now, right? He's going to come back. He told us he's going to come back. But Tom, I will agree. Tom, if he's watching right now, he will tell you he is the world's greatest writer as well. He, he will tell you yes. that he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And he's not even he's not even subtle about it. Nope. He t- he'll we're just say he's the best. The, no, we're sitting in... Uh, we're sitting in... <laughs> the uh, nail salon and we're like doing a night shoot and i'm sitting there going like so tom like do you know you're fantastic and he's just like sitting there going like yeah oh yeah oh i'm fantastic look i i'm i'm on my throne right now yeah (laughs) yeah just so great he, he's hilarious. Yeah. I love him. I can't wait to get him back. I know the fans are looking forward to it as well, too. But, you yeah. know, he's taught me so much yeah, about the show. I was going to see him. I know. I know. Well, we, you know what? We got so much time on our hands. And, and uh, through 2021, when everybody gets back to filming and things of that nature, Tom will be coming back after the show is probably either during filming or at least when it's wrapped up. He'll be back. We'll get you back on again as well, too. Maybe we'll have a big panel That's so you can say hi to Tom as well. And you'll be saying hi to him on set. Uh, this is from Robin. Uh, Robin says, Julian, I missed your Facebook lives. When are you going to get another one? Miss you, pal. And I might have lost you there. Your video froze, so we'll see what we can do there. One second. Hopefully we haven't lost you. Got some froze video. I'll just jump over to my screen here for a quick second. And Julian, I lost you there. You may have to jump back in. Hopefully we get you. Got a froze video on Julian, but he did mention to me as well, too, that he was might have to switch from his phone to something else as well, too. Um, and I'll just have another quick look at the chat as well, too, while we're waiting for Julian. I'm sure he'll jump back in. I'll keep an eye over there. So that is about the Facebook Lives. And uh, Rogava, hi, Julian. Could you share with us your experience with Bob in the scenes you may have improvised? So we kind of touched base on that. So we, he did jump out of the call. We'll wait for him to pop back in. And I have Julian on text messages as well, too. And let me see. Uh, Nat, you've been learning how to hold the boom from... Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, the boom from uh, the people on set. How can you hold your arms up for so long? We'll talk about that in a second as well, too. And we showed that uh, the boom arm. They're actually not that heavy. As you can see here, a lot of these are made... The good ones are made out of... Uh, oh, there we are. There we are. Got you back? Yeah, I told you it was going to drop. I told you. Yeah, no, I did. I mentioned that to the to the audience as well too. Let's go back over here. So there's that. That's good. We got you back. No problem. So we'll go back just a little bit. So Robin uh, was saying to miss your Facebook lives. Are you planning on doing some more of those? Um. Yeah. I mean, I might. I might go. I'm not on Facebook as much lately. You know, I, I've been. I took a little bit of a hiatus on on social media for a while because I. I mean, seeing a social dilemma did not help. Um. But uh, I. I kind of was. You know, just it's one of those things where you know you you uh, the Facebook community has a really difficult uh, you know world. It's a very difficult world, and a lot of people are very combative on there. And it was just getting to that point where everything was just so angry at each other for no reason. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, when you hide behind a keyboard and a screen. It's easy to say the worst things you can to someone. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, we all know that, and it's 
it just was getting to that point where I, I didn't really see any point in saying anything because it really wasn't getting any kind of traction. And not that I wanted to hush my voice, but what I did was that I took a hiatus from, from social media in general, just so that I can analyze the um, algorithm and understand the algorithm a little bit more for myself. Because I know that when you get so used to something, you become unconscious and you turn yourself off to the influences that you create for yourself, mm -hmm. especially with the algorithm on social media. So whether it's Instagram or Twitter or anything, you are setting yourself up. If you're not thinking about it and you're not conscious about it, you're setting yourself up for a really bad time because either you're liking things that are, are great and that's great about the algorithm, or you might be engaging with something that you're not liking mm -hmm. and that will just feed more into itself. So it's just, it's an echo chamber in itself trying to establish what you are interacting with just to be on the app longer. And for me, the more I was on Facebook, the more I was just seeing myself feed into this ugly algorithm that I designed for myself. Yeah. And so now I stepped away from it. Now I can see how I'm going to design and, and use the AI for myself and not, you know, the other way around. So no, that's good I advice. might do some Facebook lives late, you know, later. I might do more Instagram stuff because I like Instagram a little bit better, but, um, but Facebook, I know my mom's like, so I gotta, I gotta keep yeah, for family, I, I can appreciate that. But that's the yeah. thing too. I, I, especially with 2020, it's kind of taught me as well too that, you know, we can choose to accept all this negativity that's out there and just, okay, well, I know it's social media, so we'll just, the negativity comes with it. Or we can just ignore right. it. You know what I mean? And that that's what I tend to do as well too. I, and I don't tend to be on all of the platforms because I, I pick a favorite as well too. You know, for now, right now, Twitter is my thing. Um, I do Instagram and I do Facebook. But, you know, there's no matter where you go, there's going to be negative. And it's just so nice when you go have a couple of days when there's nothing but positive. It's like going through the, the drive through getting a coffee in the morning and the very first person you speak to is so nice. Hey, have a great day. And they smile. It's like, wow. But if that same person could be a real jerk, ruin your day, you become that negative and you pass it on. And social media will do that exactly. to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, it's part of the practice in life is just to make sure that, you know, you you know, what you're putting out is what kind of influence that you have on other people lives you know to be conscientious of that and that's been something you know i'm one of my favorite tv shows of all time was kung fu oh yeah uh, growing up with it. and it was my dad and i's favorite tv show i uh, so much so that i got the tattoos of the tiger and dragon nice david carradine uh, yeah pick up the urn you know <laughs> and um and one of the main things that i always remind myself is uh that question that he gets asked one of the episodes where he says what is your religion and his is to do good Ah. And that has always been my motto in my life is that whatever I'm going to do is do good to others. Don't treat others how you would want to be treated. You know, you, you do that for yourself and, you know, people are going to act the way that they're going to act. And they're gonna be shitty no matter what sort of language. No, it's good. But yeah, but you know, it's, you know, you want to treat others based on how you want to do good into the world. Always be of service and be good to, you know, put your, what vibration do you want to put out? Yeah, I, lo I love that. And I'll, I'll kind of throw something similar to that. I was listening to, I, I've been listening to a lot of public radio, WPR, NPR radio, like National Public Radio. Oh, yeah. And I like it because it's it's not the tr traditional fanfare radio and it's not politically biased. It's just kind of neutral. And you and I learn a lot from it. And so they had this guy on today. I wish I could tell you what his name was. I don't remember his name, but he was a dream expert. Okay. He's analyzing dreams. And I kind of like that stuff. And, you know, sometimes we have these dreams and we never remember them. And sometimes we do. So as one guy calls and he was the last caller and he says, okay, so I just had this dream, you know, his grandmother had passed away and uh, the, his dream was about his grandma saying, hey, uh, we'll call him George. George, uh, can, can, I have, can I borrow $15? And he's like, sure, sure, grandma. So he goes to his wallet and he had a 20. So he gives her the 20 and she says, no, no, I just want 15. And he goes, okay. So he goes back in his wallet again and, and more money is just kind of magically appearing in his dream. He had a five, he had, a, he had two fives and then and a, a couple of 20s. And he goes, he goes to give them money, whatever. And she goes, no, I just want 15. Looks back in again, whatever. And he did, he finally finds three fives. So he gives the three fives to his grandma. Basically, he wakes up and he's asking, you know, the, the dream expert, what does this mean? And the, the, the guy who he says, well, basically it shows your character. You're a very, very giving uh, person, you know, that kind of thing. And he's saying, well, I get told that a lot in my life. He's people say that I'm a very nice person and, and you're giving and blah, blah, blah. And what it all comes down to is the guy says, you know, we need more people like you in the world and you need to every once in a while accept these compliments that you get. 
You know, it's just, it was nice. It was, you know, I guess what, where I'm going with this is it is nice to spread positivity like that. And it's sometimes if you are a positive person, accept a compliment if you get it. You know, don't have to sit there and, you know, you know, put a notch on the board saying, yeah, I won another, you know, positivity award, but accept some of these things. And it's a lot more contagious than negativity, I think. Yeah, totally. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. That, I'm, I, that's, that's a perfectly well put. Yeah, I really enjoyed the interview. Yeah, it was I mean, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, just uh, just be when the camera went blank there for a second from uh, uh, Ragava okay. says, Julian, could you share us of your, your experience with Bob and the scenes you may have improvised? So we talked a little bit about Bob's um, scenes with you, you and Bob, but were there any scenes where the improvisation was allowed in or is it pretty much, because I know they follow the script pretty tight. Yeah, I mean, they, they do to a certain extent. You know, I mean, Josh and Bob, they go way back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've, uh, they've known each other for a really long time and and so they'll sometimes spin off off of each other and do these hilarious, hilarious. I mean, whether they keep it or not, but um, it, these hilarious bits between each other. And and sometimes I jump in and we'll we'll get into it. But one of the things that kind of was sort of um, an improv was actually I got it's that quote that I mean this uh, I think Hadini mother made this when she sent me this. Oh yeah. But, um, yeah, this whole, uh, you say the words, uh, um, for a uh, limited time, uh, only you could, uh, um, cut maybe next time <laughs> that was always thrown. We were always kind of just throwing things. I was like, and with that, uh, uh, could you, uh, I I'm good with sound, you know, we just mess with each other all the time and, um, and make, you know, we just, we just have fun on set as much as we can to make, you know, a funny scene. And, and when it does come out organic, such as that scene where, you know, Josh starts, you know, getting his legs stuck in my wire. That was totally improv. And when we get into the car, when we're talking about maybe you're flooding it, you know, that's all kind of played with, you know, nice when it's off those back and forth, quick jabs at each other, when it comes to dialogue, we tend to have a little bit more free. Form. So those are a little bit more improv, but, you know, watching Bob is like watching a master, you know, do jujitsu, you know, it's just, you don't know exactly what he's thinking until you all of a sudden see him putting a guy in a rare naked choke somehow. And you're like, Whoa, how'd that happen? Yeah. And, um, it's, it's unbelievable to watch, just watch Josh and, and, uh, and Bob go off on each other. And when sometimes, sometimes, you know, and I'll be honest, I, I have moments of, uh, you know, I get, I get nervous to jump in cause I want to jump in and I know that I can jump in. Um, and sometimes I do, and it's it comes off great. We have these fun moments, you know. It it's they're all subtle, yeah, because we do stick to the script, and it's so detailed, and everything has a purpose. Anything in the Gilliverse, yeah, has. If you pay attention, close enough attention to it, well, for you'll sure. know that it's different. So yeah, you you know that, and everybody knows that. Anybody who's a fan of anything Gilliverse, they'll know that. So true, you know and, we. And they're also observant too like all the production assistants and the writers they're always watching what's going on and like what some of these things where you guys are improvising off scene you know, uh, you know off camera like they're watching and they they observe that and they can tell right away okay that let's let's work with that piece that you just did there maybe not scripted exactly. but they can tell they're always observing here's a good question from uh, and if it's reads, yeah yeah sorry go ahead. no that's, that's okay yeah, if, yeah. If, if it reads well you know it, it, and just go with it yeah yeah um yeah. nat romero exactly. says you've been Thank learning, you, yeah uh, she says, uh, you've been learning how to hold the boom uh, from the sound people on site, right? Can can you, uh, how can you hold your arms up for so long? So we'd lost you just at that point. So I was bringing up the, the boom for a second. And, and they're not as bad as what people think. You know, carbon fiber is pretty light but strong. And the, it seems like the longer you have them out, it's, it's not that bad. But you've had a lot more experience on set using it. Tell us about that process of learning from the actual sound crew there. And what's it been like? <laughs> Yeah, that's such a great photo. I saw that on Reddit the other day, and I was just laughing my butt off because it was just so funny to to see that somebody got a snapshot of that. And it's perfect because you know the sound sound crew and I, you know, obviously we're we're tight. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I was I was you know when you're dealing with such a sh you know definitely a shorter boom is going to be your you're going to have a lot more movement and micro movements in it. So you have to be very careful with with what you're doing, even though they're not recording anything mm -hmm. you know you want to be as authentic as you can and that's exactly why i asked for the advice um you know so i um so i i 
a lot of butterflies, man. <laughs> got to do a lot of these for the whole year, you know, until we shoot again. And I got to be constantly doing this because, man, I did that one year where I didn't do any, I didn't work out at all. And it was like excruciating because we were standing there for a long take. It was that, that scene with the, um, with the, uh, the, uh, lazy boys. Oh um, yeah. 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 And that whole scene where I'm standing and I have this long boom and it's long and it's helping, but I had to stand there for a solid, like, you know, five minutes, which is not a long time, but man, I was, I know. Oh. Try, 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 no, 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 no. try this at home. But if you people don't know what that's like, take a pillow and hold the pillow out, a small couch pillow. Hold your arm out yeah. straight across and hold that pillow for five minutes. Try to hold your arm yeah, out. Hold for your f- own arm. Yeah, I know. Like just, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, and so, that was a great and, scene. And the thing that I learned, the thing that I learned with it, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit if I can. Is like, say, if I'm standing like this, the the technique is to keep your arms straight and just and just let them be straight. Mm-hmm. Don't try to do this because a lot of people try to do, the, or they do the under. Yeah, you know they. they Thing. But anyway, <laughs> if you keep your arms straight and you kind of lock your back in, roll your shoulders back, your arms kind of just suspend there. And that's one of the best tips I ever learned. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I, I'll have to go back and watch Better Call Saul strictly just to watch you hold the boom arm. So when I'm doing some videos and things like that, I can learn some tips as well, too, because it does help tremendously. You know, and that's the the last thing you want to have happen. I mean, I, I, of course, you're doing it fictitiously, you know, but the last thing that the real person wants to do in a real video shoot is have that mic come into the frame. And then boom, you're, you know, the whole shot's ruined. And then you're the, you're the, the bad guy on the set. Right. And on top of that, you know, you're also dealing with excruciatingly detailed people that are like, that's not how you hold a bill. <laughs> and so of course I have, you know, I was sitting there going like, I should probably, before I get some serious heat from the community, I'm probably going to, I need to learn some detail here. So when I was like, I can't, I can't remember whether it was the third season or if it was the second season, it might've, might've been the third season um, where we're like outside and I'm, uh, you, the picture's being taken where I'm standing there. I'm like, do I hold it this way? Um, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that there was not going to be any discrepancy in any way. So if there is a moment out there for all the fans out there, if you see a moment where I'm not holding my boom correctly, please uh, know that I'm not a real sound guy. <laughs> you just play a sound guy. But man, talk about having yeah. the best instruction ever, right? It's like you went to sound sound guy yeah. 101, uh, courtesy of Better Call Saul and Sony Pictures. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. That's good. That's yeah, good. I can't, I can't remember if it's Philip or Michael, but you know they he's the head and he's just amazing. Uh, th- th- he's award winning and you know, he's got a he's got a I think he's got an Emmy for sound and it's just you're dealing with the best yeah. so anyway well, you're the dealing funny, with the best the funny thing is I mean not that you're probably going to use those tips we're always learning right we're always saving information for a rainy day I mean, let's say down the road, you want to produce an indie film or something like that, or do something on your own. Exactly. Look what you've just learned. And you might be that guy where it's going to be a one or a two man person crew. You know, you could be the camera guy and, and you know, maybe you can teach, pass on that. If you get like a, an amateur sound, sound field person, um, you know, maybe you yeah. can pass on what you've learned, you know, even though you weren't recording on set, it is very helpful. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you deal. I do do some short films and sometimes I've, you know, right now I'm getting into music videos, so I just finished a, a two-year project that I was working with a, a friend of mine who's a I'll plug. His name is Trey Perry. He's a fantastic uh, hip hop artist, and um, yeah, man, it, we did his music video, and I didn't. I did, I was lucky that I didn't have to deal with sound mostly because mm-hmm. I'm doing a music video, so I'm doing voiceover basically. But um, you know, it's I've gone to a lot of workshops, and I've done a lot of. Um, you know, I've gone to a lot of festivals where they have these, you know, these panels with amazing people in sound and in cameras and, and lighting. And you just, I just want to absorb as much of it as I can so that I can be, again, as an actor, you want to be as sensitive to the crew as possible because it would not be for not the crew. Mm -hmm. I want to say that to be clear that if anybody in crew is watching this, know that I have mad respect. It would not be without the crew. So knowing how to be sensitive to their needs and knowing how to be within their, you know, and their spectrum of, uh, you know, 
good. Yeah. If you're working with them and being good on their on their terms, you know, it's good to know. It's good to know these things that you have to that's good to appreciate them for sure because they do a fantastic job and they make i mean it's like the roadies for the and i don't I, this could be taken the wrong way but it's almost like the the, the roadie techs for the rock stars you know like you know you might have the guitar hero up there playing and he's, he's he or she sounded great but they got a great tech over there tuning up that guitar setting it up right and i'm not trying to compare you know cameramen and sound engineers and things like that as roadies i don't mean that but it you know they make the people uh, that are on the camera shine yeah, they, totally. they really do. You know, the back end of things never gets as much light and appreciation as it should. And right now, I'm, I'm, and this is kind of like on the download because I'm still working on it. But um, just to throw it out there, I'm doing this, um, starting this podcast, which is something I'd love to invite you on too, um, uh-huh. which is uh, called It's Mollywood, which is all about the film community here in New Mexico. Um, so yeah, it's, it's to Mollywood. I like it. Right there in That's New Mexico. great. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I'm inviting a whole bunch of crew on and wanting to, to get the back end of the story of, of the film industry and hear what the, what the film crew has to say, whether it's from lighting to sound to, you know, even the gaffers and, and, you know, everybody, because again, we don't, we don't see this because the front end is so brilliantly shiny and beautiful and not to say anything bad about it, because obviously I'm. but um you know it's the crew is so underappreciated for how they are literally the backbone to any production and without a crew without your sound without the lighting without any of those guys without your dp without your pas without your ad's going around running around screaming first team second team cut Mm -hmm. you know lights you know you're hearing all these people do this and it's all because of them that we're able to see the thing that we have on screen. So it's, you know, it's something to, I think a lot of people that are into any kind of movie or film or TV show, um, to think about the, you know, what happens on the back end, you know, I know is everything. Yeah. So I yeah, think, I think exactly you're going to be very, is, I think it'd be very successful with it because right now people, because we're waiting, we're all waiting. And I mean, when I say we, everyone, including the, the, you know, cast and crew, we're looking forward to season six. But we're all looking forward to anything we can get, anything to get us through to you know the filming and and the airing of the of the show. So, and I know demographically, people love these behind the scenes. Like when we had Marshall Adams on the show, you know, um, we're going to have a big series coming up very very soon over the next few weeks. We're going to have um, a bulk of the writers, you know, and getting to find out how these pieces of the puzzle come together is just amazing. Because as you say too, like everything is so polished what we see. But there's so, and it's like a nice cake that you eat or a nice meal that someone cooks for you. It, you know, we're enjoying it. Boy, that's that's tasty. But what went into that to make that, that's all those little tiny pieces separately, maybe kind of cool on their own, have a little spice or a little on the tip of your finger, tastes good. But you put it all together and it's magic, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's not, it reminds me of that awesome meme that I saw where you see a bunch of, you know, a family sitting around the table going like, Thank you, Jesus. And then right, right below, you see a guy who's working on the fields going like, you're welcome. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you forget about every little detail that goes into anything. You know, you you look at a polished item and you appreciate it for what it is. But then you think about the craftsmanship. Mm-hmm. So, That's right. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. E- even little yeah. things like doing this show here. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a face on the camera and I get to talk to, you know, my favorite people I love every week, including yourself. But I couldn't do it if I didn't have my wife here, uh, Sandra, sending me the questions, our moderators in the chat, things like that. Like, I mean, I d- just couldn't couldn't work. Like last week, she was sick. She couldn't help me. And, and her friend, uh, uh, Leanne, who's our, our moderator as well, too, she helped us a little bit as well, too, uh, greatly, actually. But, you know, you realize when you don't have the things that are working so well for you, if you didn't have that AD running around like you're saying, stuff like that, you know, where, where do I go? Where do I go, boss? What do I do? You know, like we need these people in our lives and they're appreciated for sure. Here's a good question from Mrs. Which Wexler. Reminds me, I yeah. got, I, which reminds me, I got to throw in a little shout out sure. to these guys because I, I got I to gotta say hi to these muchachas, my, my Teresa and, and Robin and Karina and Donna Kay and all those guys, all, all those ladies <laughs> that, you know, have made this possible, which I got to say, I got to give them credit for, for hooking us together because, mm. you know, they, they're such devout, such devout fans of the show and, and you know, they've had so much support on me and, and my career and they they're awesome to talk to in, in general as people and they're beautiful people but um i just had to throw them out because 
Uh, or throw them out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Threw them out. Get out. them out of That's here. Right. Get out of here, girls. No, we're yeah, we're great. Out we're grateful too. Actually, we're friends with all of them on Facebook as well too. We look at it as Gilliver's family. You know, it's it's. I, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's two things about this show that I love. Number one, talking to people like you every week. I love it to death. Um, but I also want to put. And I know you'll agree with me. I'm gonna put it on an equal platform. I like talking to all these people in the chat. Um, I would love them. It's just a highlight of a week because we all have the yeah. same passion, you know. And they're good people. So yeah. all part of the Gilliver's family. Uh, another one yeah, of the Gilliver's like family. Uh, Mrs. Wexler says, if your character could help film any commercial alongside the rest of the uh, film crew for a character or company in the Better Call Saul universe, who would it be for and what would it be about? So we kind of joked about Michael Mando, you know, like doing something like that. But if, you know, if the opportunity presented itself, um, would, it, would it be a cool HHM commercial or, you know, any, any other kind of fictitious yeah. things you could do? Totally. Well, I mean, we kind of did that little bit on the very end of season either four or five where we film, uh, I think it was season four, where Patrick is, you know, we're we're filming him for the memorial for uh, Saul's brother. And, um, you know, there was a moment there where I thought, man, it would be so fun to get to work. Because Patrick Fabian is one of the most gregariously awesome human beings. I've, obviously, you have him as your intro. Um, he's just a fantastic human being and to work with him is so much fun. And, um, you know, I've, I've, you know, always wanted to work with him and do some stuff and also my commander. And of course the notorious Giancarlo Esposito would be a fantastic addition oh, to that too. Wow. Yes. Oh man, I would, to get, to get in a scene with him would be <laughs> fantastic. What would we do? I have no idea. What could, Los Pollos Hermanos, I could do. We could do a commercial for Los Pollos Hermanos. We could do that. Just mm -hmm. throwing it out there, Tom, if you're watching this. <laughs> well, maybe. maybe do you, Can you speak Yoda? Could you be like a slightly older baby Yoda and maybe do a guest appearance maybe over on oh. uh, Mandalorian or something? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do it. Mm -hmm. Los Pollos Hermanos. Mm -hmm. I can <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Maybe. No, but that would be cool. That would be very, very cool. Do some kind of more employee training at the uh, Los Polos. That'd be something. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. That'd be hilarious. And then we can be like, I, I could be a terrible actor pretending to do the, like, because obviously sound guy is not supposed to be an actor. So no. I could be like, Friar, don't yeah. do this. <laughs> exactly. No, that'd be, that'd be great. Like I'd be SNL all down skill. for that. That yeah. would be very cool. That's right. Um, Claudia, yeah, yes, man. Claudia is another, uh, another one of our YouTube uh, channel members. Nice to yeah. have her here. She says, um, uh, "Was being an actor your dream as a child?" Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely my main thing. It's uh, ever since I was a kid. Basically, I just was. I mean, what can I say? I'm a Leo. I can't really, you know, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna shit too much on being a Leo, but. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've always wanted to be a part of, you know, I did theater growing up my whole life. Um, that was basically my life. I was a theater kid in small town, Boca de Panama. So it's like a very small, you know, community, a very tight knit community, which reminds me a lot of the community of um, Santa Fe, where I lived for a really long time. And including the Better Call Saul community and any, anybody in the Gillivers community has been very much it's that same kind of bond that I feel with my people back home. So it's really, it's really familiar. And I'm, you know, you know, having fun nights where we watch episodes with, you know, Donna Kay and, and Teresa and, and now Karina, I'm hoping that she comes out soon so that we can watch an episode if we ever have open gatherings. Again. Nice. Um, you know, it's, it's that community of people that are just so, you know, invested. So it's part of that too, you know, being on set is like being on a small little universe of itself. It's a little world and everybody knows everybody. So it reminds me of back home and, um, you know, anything in film or acting, there's a sense of community with it that, um, is very unique. It's not, you know, you got the music community too, which is very similar, but anything in the arts really, but I, yeah, it's been always been my dream to, to, get up on screen someday and, and take my talent somewhere that could be used for something. And, you know, little by little I'm learning and respecting my beginner status as my dad has always, you know, had always taught me. And, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a humbling experience being an actor and being in film. It's always been a dream of mine and it keeps on, it's a gift that keeps on giving. 
Never, ever give up on your dreams. Set your sights and always, and when someone says you're never going to make it, don't do it. Just stop. Oh, man. Oh, man. So that reminds me of my of my modeling career. Right before I started like to quit modeling, because there was, not to go into the drama of it, but there was a lot of stuff about the modeling industry that wasn't really uh, clicking with me. And, and my agent at one point had pulled me into the room because I, I wanted to get into film and I'd always been an actor and I wanted to get in film. And then this is Panama and... You know, there's not really a big community in Panama, but they filmed Piedras de, uh, Manos de Piedra, which was a uh, film with Robert uh, De Niro about Robert De Niro. And um, so there was that film happening in Panama, and I really wanted to get in. And, you know, it was my beginning stages of trying to make the commitment and making the step forward to actually pursue film. And, and um, my agent just flat out told me, he's like, you're not an actor. You're, mm. you're a model. I just, just let the pictures, you know, just be, be good for the pictures. Don't, don't get into acting. And I'm not going to say, look at me now. No, but that's right. That's right. Yeah. There's yeah, been so many people. Gonna say, I'm going to say, look at me now, baby. Yeah. But it's, it's also because it's, you know, it's just so validating to be a part of a world that, you know, I, I just, I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. And I'm glad that it's been kind to me. There's been so many people great in life that have fantastic talents that have been told you're never going to make it and look where they are. And basically, they've become better than the instructors. We're going to go through a speed round of questions here as well, too. And I, I want to apologize. There's so, so many questions I didn't get a chance to ask. Uh, so Karina talks. Uh, there's one question. Oh, no, no, it's good. We love it. We love it. Uh, so Karina mentions about uh, the sweaty audition. So we've talked about that on the bike, but I just want to acknowledge Karina yeah. on that. Um, we'll go through these. We'll, give, we'll be very quickly. Uh, Rogava says, as, and I know I'm pronouncing that name wrong. I'm sorry. As an actor, how has your acting skill improved from then, you know, as a young, you know, getting into it till now? Would you, can you see the evolution of your, of your um, skill increasing? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Definitely. Um, Blazy Gardner says, how many times did you have to rehearse getting into the Suzuki Esteem in a hurry? Because there's a lot of those things where you're jumping in, sometimes you're pulling in the boom mic. Was there a lot of rehearsal for that? Oh yeah, I got twenty. It was like probably at least, at least twenty rehearsals and then twenty takes. You know, I had to make sure that it was right, and we had to get every good shot that we could, and it turned out perfect. Yeah, good. And yes, I am a master at putting a boom inside a, a car now. So <laughs> I can imagine. I'll get some tips from you on that. Uh, <laughs> Teresa says, uh, "Julian, can't wait to hang out with you again. It was so much fun. Hope to see you in season six, and we all hope so as well too. Who knows how that the production company evolves right in season six? We don't know, right?" Um, our good friend, yeah, Eamon, nah, I'm not gonna say fingers crossed, Tom, if you're uh, listening, um, and, uh, Gordon Smith is coming on next week as well too. So I'll try to put some, uh, fire in to Gordon there and say, uh, we need, we need some more sound guy. Uh, hey, go for it. Eamon, a very good friend of ours on the channel here. One of our helpers that helps us tremendously with production and also one of our YouTube channel members says, as we've asked nearly everyone else, oh, this is good. Uh, it's slightly different at this time. If you were to get a death call. Uh, who do you want to be the one? Okay, who do you want the one to call you? So if you let's say your character gets killed in a in a freak boom pole accident, um, and if you get a death call, who would you like to be the one to call you? I would like an intervention from both all Peter, Vince, and Tom, as well as Bob, Josh, and Haley. If you're gonna kill me, I want the whole world to be in that room to tell me because I. No, I would love to. I'd love to get killed off. There's been moments where I've thought about it, where yeah. I really would just love to get killed off really well. You know, I've I think, thought about it. But I think Bob. I think Bob would be awesome to get a call from. It was just like, hey, so Julian, I just want to let you know, it's been great being having you as my sound guy. I'd be like, you're gone. Great. I could I could picture either you backing up because me when I'm, I'm when I'm doing something and I'm not aware of my environment. I'll, if I'm yeah. holding a microphone, I might walk into traffic, boom, gone, right? Or you step in a puddle, and if you're not using okay. wireless, you're electrocuted. So there's, I can't see any, any too many other ways to kill the sound guy. Oh, man. Oh, I, th I think it would just be, you know, it would be just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like yeah. he always <laughs> Yes, exactly. You know, shot, be like being standing in the way going like, what? what? Oh, exactly, like, gone. Oh. Hey, where, where's the mic? The yeah. mic fell into camera into the frame. Why'd that happen? Well, the, our sound guy's dead. I mean, obviously, obviously, my ego wants to have like a horribly glorious, glorious, glorious. Um, <laughs> there you go, new word, glorious. Uh, death for the sound guy, where he has to do a cartel run for Bob or some shit, and then 
ends up getting massively murdered by like 10 guys. But, you know, yeah. it's sound guy. You know, right. Sound guy's got to go off the most awkward way. Exactly. I agree on that one. Uh, Edwin Crane's jumping in saying hello. Um, let me see here. I'm going to see if I'm getting down towards the very end here. And I do apologize. I missed a few. Uh, Lori says, we love Haley Holmes, a character, drama girl. Did you know before she was, did you know her before she was on the show? No, no. When she finally joined the crew, it was kind of like, I, I wasn't sure whether she was going to be a, a new member of our crew or not until she was. And then it, she, she's fantastic. She's fantastic. I just, I mean, She's, she's just so great, and she's amazing. She's just so lovely and beautiful, lovely and great with everybody. And it's you know we've been all been friends for a really long time now, so I can I couldn't imagine film crew without being without having Haley in it. So you know I'm I didn't know, and when we did know, it was fantastic. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, she's a she's an amazing person. Haley Holmes. Nice, nice. Uh, one last question here. This is from Harini says, uh, what do you see in the future of sound guys? So we kind of talked about, you know, uh, theoretically uh, killing off a character, but, uh, what do you think, see in the future of the sound guy? What do you think we would have been doing around the time of breaking bad? So breaking bad comes around. Do you think, you know, you've graduated from, you know, basically the college, uh, you know, and maybe doing great productions. Like we can, we can just, you know, hypothesize here. What do you think become breaking bad time? Where do you think uh, sound guy would be? Well, hopefully not dead, um, but I would love to see, like, it would be, I've always had, like, thoughts of what would happen with, with the sound guy, whether he just, like, quit sound and just became an executive at a, at a corporation or something, which be, would be hilarious. Yeah. And with, like, a cut and, yeah. like, and a suit. Um, but I've, I, I think, I think, honestly, it would be great to see that they all stuck together and, or at least Josh and and or that they broke apart they, their whole group kind of broke apart and then came back like a jane silent bob reunion and <laughs> you know it's like josh and i are now like huge directors in film and there's bob still fucking doing bad 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 this and we come back and just find him like like we get something screwed in one of our productions in albuquerque or something so we need a lawyer so we hey we, wasn't he a lawyer would be an interesting yeah you know, we'll turn to it yeah but we've all thought you know we've all kind of tried to throw it to tom's way if there would be a spinoff to uh to the film crew and see if they would have a, a whole spinoff on a spinoff would be hilarious that's that's so funny yeah. because that's the thing, right? We don't know. There's so many characters that we that we don't see in Breaking Bad, right? So it's nice to hypothesize about that. And yeah, th that'd be really funny. You're completely out of the thing. Your executives at maybe some high tech company, you know, like uh, you know, Silicon Valley. It's completely different what we would expect, but very very cool. Like, yeah, totally like a programmer or something. <laughs> His hidden talent was being a programmer. That's right. Well, one of the things we didn't get a, to, a chance to talk about tonight, I'll just I'll mention this briefly, uh, and I want to get you back so we can talk some music because we do this. This channel is a, as a core audience is is uh, music. I'm a musician, we, yeah. So I want to get you back. We'll talk about some guitar. But you have a YouTube channel. I know you're not doing a ton with it, but you're st you're trying to get back into YouTube, and do some things there. Um, yeah, yeah. T tell tell us about your what you plan on maybe doing with your YouTube channel. And I know you've got some music videos there, but is it something you right. want to approach in the future? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm still, you know, it's just the commitment. I have uh, just have had such a hard time sitting down and I have, I'm one of those people who loves to put my feet in every pool. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a writer, so I'm, uh, I'm a novel writer, so I'm writing a book right now. And I'm also into arts, you know, just craftsmanship. I've, I've built these, these wands, <laughs> not going to even go into that <laughs> um, for Renaissance fairs and stuff like that. I make jewelry and, and, and all sorts of stuff, but, um, I love painting. I'm a big artist. I'm a big painter. So I love painting. I've totally thrown that off and, uh, music, obviously music is my second love and I hate to be polyamorous, but, uh, I gotta love acting and music. <laughs> um, so music is a big deal for me, but music is definitely something that I've jumped in and wanted to, to, I want to do both. Um, monologues I'm, I'm starting to get into the art of doing a really decent monologue so i want to have like a whole repertoire of different monologues that i film as i've d done a little bit on my, on my youtube channel and it's gotten a little bit of, a little bit of a huge, so i yeah. kind of want to get into that but 
I really want to get into short films and, oh. and making, you know, decent short films. And I, and all shot on iPhone. I'm a big fan of Steven Soderbergh's idea of shooting with an iPhone. And, you know, he just finished a couple of movies with an iPhone. And now I have this really awesome attachment by this company called Moment. Okay. And they make these amazing lenses. So I have this anamorphic lens that is unbelievable that I can shoot with my iPhone and it creates a full cinematic look. And I have a uh, you know an ND filter, and um, you know I've I, I shot my music video on it, and it's really decent. If you look up Trey Perry, um, and the song is Mamba Freestyle, Mamba Year Freestyle, um, that's the music video that I I shot of him, and we all shot that on my iPhone, all in El Paso, Texas, in two days. Wow! And it was a, such a a rush and a euphoric experience and, and cathartic, you to say, but it was. It was just amazing to be, you know, running the show and, and knowing what I wanted to shoot and getting to film and making film. And so when I started my YouTube channel and rebooted it up after reboot, after reboot, <laughs> um, I wanted to make uh, like a, a little vlog slash kind of YouTube channel based on small independent filmmakers that are just starting off doing nothing. And, and I still want to do that once I have my roots finally set in a little bit now that I've moved to Albuquerque and have everything situated in a more, you know, settled place, I'm going to start booting up a lot of stuff. So it's more to come in the future for me. I'm really excited to take on, I'm also doing real estate. So that really helps oh, you know, that's cool. throw another ball into the juggle, you know? <laughs> yeah. Throwing stuff at the wall, see what sticks as we say spaghetti at the wall. Yeah. No, that's cool. Hey man, I'm going to, I'd rather slide into the grave burnt and crusty and just been like damn that was a ride you know that's right we I'm tried that everything that that's right do me a favor yeah. after the, like not necessarily tonight yeah. over the course of the weekend send me a link uh, by email what to this lens because i'm a i'm a photographer and videographer oh, well, so absolutely. i'd love to find out okay yeah that'd be oh, great totally thank you yeah, totally. Well, listen, we're, we're right at the time to wrap things up, but it's been an absolute pleasure here. We had a, little, a few uh, internet hic uh, hiccups tonight, and I apologize for that. But I all, And I also apologize we didn't get to everyone's questions, but we're going to get Julian back for sure. Just a few other things I'd like to say as well, too. So first of all, thank you for sure, but I want to thank all of our, our channel members. It's a new feature we've rolled out. If you want to check that out, you can hit the join button down below this video right now. Our Patreon supporters, our, our moderators, we couldn't do this without you. Our subscribers, we're very, very blessed for that as well, too. Our super chatters, our PayPal donators, and of course, people that buy our merch that we wear here on the show as well, too. It all helps. It lets us keep doing these things because, you know, YouTube is not a high paying gig and we all have our real jobs. So we have to offset some costs somewhere. So thank you for that. As I mentioned earlier in the program, tuning in at the same time again next week, we have 2020 Emmy Award nominee writer uh, Gordon Smith on the show as well, too. It's, our, it's kind of cool. We had This will be our second Emmy Award nominator, or Emmy, no, Emmy nominated writer, oh, Tom, Tom Schnauz, of course, uh, my co-host, obviously up for the same award this year. Better Call Saul didn't get the love that they deserved, but, you know, nominations were great. And uh, be sure to check us out uh, on all the socials. All the links are down below. But speaking of all the links below, we have a ton to yours. Your Instagram, you know, your Facebook, your YouTube channel, your IMD profile, your website, all the good stuff. So be sure to check that out. And uh, Yeah, go check it out. Do that. Go, go flood me. Go, go flood him. Go flood me. Let's go flood each other on social media. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. And the open <laughs> invitation for you to come back any anytime. And then thank the girls, all anytime. of them. That uh, were a part of Not making him. this happen tonight, Karina and the whole crew, everybody, uh, the, all of all of you, uh, fantastic. We love the Gilliverse family. I'll say goodbye to Julian off the air. Don't go away. Everyone have a safe weekend out there, and uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you right here inside the Gilliverse next Friday, same time. And until then, cheers. Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad El Camino and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.